Hey guys, it's Jeremy Scott with the Liberty Bugle Town Hall. Hey, I just gotta say it, much like you saw in the thumbnail, Republicans are losers. And you know why? It's by design. If you didn't really, uh, if you didn't understand it, I'm gonna explain it for you. And I'm gonna try and do it as quickly as I possibly can. There's a reason why Republicans keep losing. The red tsunami, the red wave, the red, uh, the piddle, the whatever you want to call it, uh, the, the red trickle, whatever, the red tsunami didn't happen. Surprise. And I bet you're wondering why. Well, some of us know. It's because the RNC sucks. It really does. Uh, and it's because we have really garbage leadership. It all starts right down at the top, uh, the top and moves all the way down to the bottom. And at the bottom is, well, us, the people. And if uh, none of this should really be surprising to any of you at this point, I'm talking about this is because I'm pissed off. I'm really, I'm tired of it. I, I, just, I really am. Uh, it's, I'm going to make a really quick comparison with you guys on a tangent. Hopefully you can follow along with me. But before I do, I'm going to ask that you do one thing for me. And it's free. Click the subscribe button down below and even the little bell. And we'll tell you when more uh, wonderful episodes are going to be dropping. And uh, it'll alert you when all that new content is rolling in. So please subscribe and you can be mad at me now and later in the future. So here we are, Republicans. By the way, I'm a registered Republican in the state of Arizona, so I can kind of speak with a little bit of authority on this. But here we are. Uh, the Republicans are losers because they choose to be. I know that sounds crazy, but they choose to be. They do it because they can't unify. There is zero unity in the Republican Party. Now, we did actually have some great, I say we, the collective, we did have some great pickups here and there, uh, several house seats that really went our direction, but locally, uh, there were a lot of great pickups in, uh, in state legislatures around the country, but on the national scene, the big scene, and the things that, that really, really matter, we suck bad. And, uh, for example, <laughs> To, and to tell you, they don't want to learn. Republicans are, are notoriously famous for snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that people like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to show you the one guy who I think is responsible for a lot of it. Ready? Oh, it's lovely Mitch. Oh, how you doing, buddy? So good to see you. Glad you could join us. It's Mitch McConnell, everyone. This turkey-necked buzzard has been around the Senate forever. Uh, he's been around almost as long as Pelosi. And uh, I, I can't, if there's one person on the Republican side that I really can't stand, well, I could give you a list, but this guy really takes the cake. He did not want to fund people like Blake Masters here in Arizona. You know why? Because he has a grudge against Donald Trump. That's okay. A lot of the Trump-endorsed candidates didn't win. Some did. Uh, the media overall is going to talk about the ones who didn't, and they're going to blame it on Trump. Yes, I know their favorite whipping boy, Donald Trump. It's always about him. Why is it always me? It's a horrible impression. It almost sounds like Regis Philbin, uh, but bad. But why are they always picking on Trump? I guess he's an easy target. They're used to going back to him. But McConnell uh, loves people like I don't know, Mitt Romney and uh, Liz Cheney and, uh, you know, and all the old rhinos really, really loves him. Uh, he was a big McCain guy uh, because they towed this party line and they thought they'd just get in order and they just win and win and win based on the fact that they've been there forever and it's their turn. They're not willing to put in the work. Uh, the work of serving the community. Everyone that I have talked to and uh, even the, the hosts that I've listened to uh, that are in minority communities, especially the black community, Republicans just don't show up. You want to win there, you got to show up. You got to talk to people. You have to be there and you have to make the case for why you're going to make things better. But far be it in their very busy schedule to try and want to reach out to any minority community uh, when they can just try and bank it on vote on election day, period. Guys, look, you know how, how they love bad ideas? Here's a great example. Now, I'm going to say this. I met Blake Masters 
he's a good guy. He's, you know, he's really not the, the evil fellow that everybody paints him out to be. He's actually a pretty decent guy. Um, but the guy lost big. There was a lot of ballot splitting. What that means to, to you guys, or what that should mean, is the fact that on the ticket, people chose one Republican candidate, but not the other. They voted for just the governor, or just the senator, or just the House, and they didn't vote Republican down the line. And had they done that, we wouldn't have had issues like with Herschel Walker and so on, and runoffs. Uh, we would have had more wins, I truly believe, if there hadn't been ballot splitting. I won't talk about the Arizona race. I don't want to get into that whole pile right now. We could discuss it later but they have chosen the reason i mentioned blake masters and this is an article that you'll actually see on yahoo news and a few of the others uh just to name as i was going through uh the rnc has now tapped blake masters to be the guy to tell them what went wrong to come up with a new strategy or strategery uh moving forward uh to 2024 I can tell you that's probably not a great idea unless you want to look at things that didn't go well. Uh, if that's really going to be your focus of, hey, Blake, so glad you're here. Uh, we want to hear everything that you did and do the opposite. That perhaps is their strategy. I don't know. But that seems to be the only way to really win is to do the opposite of what Blake Masters did. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with the integrity of Blake as an, as an individual or a human or his uh, his vision for what he really wanted to accomplish and so on. It just means the campaign wasn't run well. And being here in Arizona, I can tell you that for an absolute fact that also lovely Mitchell over here uh, did not want to fund Blake's campaign. So all of the negative ads that were there every two minutes, if you're watching anything from uh, Hulu to YouTube to Netflix, to, I mean, any chance that an, an ad came up that was political, uh, of course, Sunday football, nobody's watching that, right, was a hit piece on Blake Master's over and over and over again. And by the time Blake got towards the, the, the fourth quarter, by the time when it really mattered, guess what? Your message was shit. It was gone. It was lost. It was pointless. You might as well just shut your mouth, save the money, and figure it out another time. Because McConnell and the leadership at the RNC tanked him. They tanked Masters. They tanked several others around the country, and I can get into that as well, too. But they don't want to win. Why? Why wouldn't they want to win? Why, Jeremy, why wouldn't they want to win? It seems like a thing you'd want to do, right? Winning seems like fun, more fun than losing. However, here's the real key. If you remember, I know this is, seems like a long time ago, but back in 2010, when the Tea Party rose up and gave a massive win to the Republicans and gave a referendum on the Barack Obama at that point and handed the House and Senate to the Republicans, what did they do? What'd they do? Anyone? Anyone listening? Anyone? That's right. Nothing. They did nothing. And that has been the feeling ever since. They, they have a lot of great ideas about what they're going to do, and then they don't deliver. And you know why? Because they would rather have the specter, the boogeyman. They would rather have somebody evil that they're opposed to, to fundraise against, instead of having the responsibility, are you listening, Mitch? The responsibility of doing what the hell you said you were going to do. That's it. It's plain and simple. We would rather fundraise on fear than commit and do things of substance for you guys. That's really how the GOP, the grand old party, has run forever. It is scare you enough to vote for us, we'll take your donation money, and we'll do jack shit if we happen to actually win. That's why Donald Trump became a thing, guys. It's because he was an outsider who pointed this out, and he came in and he actually kicked ass and did things. And then was punished for it, of course. By who? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Mitch, maybe? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, you did, you jerk. Well, right. oh, I got a lot of other words for you. Um... But now we have the brain children of, oh, it's it's not just Mitch anymore. What other rhino is, are we going to, to have now? Now that the, the Republicans somehow actually won the House, we won the House. Oh, boy, we got one-third uh, of five columns. It's not just three, guys. We got one-third here. We have uh, 
Uh, we're going to get the House. We're going to get the legislative branch. Uh, but here we go. It's this guy. Oh, it's Kevin McCarthy. Every Hi, Kevin. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, pal. So happy you're here to do nothing. He's going to do nothing. He talks about what he's going to do. Now, now this is for uh, for my fellow fighters in the audience. If you guys have... I've been a martial artist since I was a, a young teenager, and I fought competitively in my younger years. I'm too old. It hurts too much now. But what do you not do in a fight? You don't telegraph your moves to your enemy. Why? Because you're going to get punched in the face. And what has Kevin done? He's talked about how he's going to remove members of the squad like Rashida Tlaib and uh, Ilan Omar and people like that from certain committees. Uh, you know, and, and he's telegraphing his moves. And you know why he's doing it? Because he's pandering to the base. He was pandering to the base saying, I promise, please, sir, may I have some more? Please put me in. I promise I'll do a good job. And you won't. Kevin, you're crap. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, buddy, but we see through your bullshit. Some of us do, and everybody should. That's why you're having challengers. And you should have challengers. That's why even uh, a lady who I, I, I even actually, I really, really like her, uh, Ron McDowell, McDaniel, I, I really, I like her an awful lot. She's uh, wonderful. She's charming. She's intelligent. She's a great representative for the RNC. But as the chairman, chairwoman, chairperson, uh, uh, you know, she is wonderful, but not wonderfully effective. And that's why we have individuals like Harvey Dillon. And I, I love the things that I have heard from her. Uh, I believe that she is of a new breed, of a new... Uh, a new opportunity, a new direction for the country, and a new direction for the RNC. And I think that people should be challenged. They should not be comfortable. And, and you know, e even listening to Ronna and the things that, that she has done, and she said that she's helped to change so much with the RNC and new tactics and talking about encouraging early voting and uh, encouraging, bar you know, uh, ballot harvesting and, and these other techniques that obviously the Democrats are much better at. It's a day late and a dollar short, sweetheart. It just is. So uh, my personal, I have a hard time actually endorsing uh, clients, I'm much, or clients, endorsing candidates. I'm much better at criticizing than endorsing, trust me. Uh, but I, I will tell you, you need to get familiar with Harmie Dillon. She's fantastic. Uh, she will lay out a true vision for what the RNC could be, for the new breed, the new direction, and uh, where things should be going. I, I can tell you I have more faith here uh, than I did in Rana. And, and and that's just the way that it is uh, because facts are bearing themselves out. So what's the worst that could happen? We could stick with her and have garbage. And the fact that she's trying to tap Blake Masters as uh, the right consultant and the right guy to help lead forward should be very troubling. So I'm going to stick with Army Dillon and uh, hopefully things work out well for her. Uh, to take the, the chairman, chairwoman position, and we'll see how that goes. Now, uh, let's talk about this. Let's go back and talk about Kevin McCarthy just really, really quickly. Kevin, uh, once again, he's telegraphing his moves. He's talking about how he's going to push for the Hunter Biden investigation. Needs to happen, guys. Needs to happen. It's not just sensationalized. But what did you do? You talked about how you were going to push the investigation, and what happened? Now the Democrats are doing what? They're circling the wagons. And now they said that they're going to come out aggressively against any inquiry, against any allegations. They're not allegations. They're facts. Uh, but they're going to call them allegations. They're going to, they're going to try to, to debunk uh, things that we've all seen with our own eyes. It's called gaslighting. They will tell you uh, that what you see isn't true and that only truth is their version of it. Um that's kind of what's going to happen. And I hope we don't just get tied up in committee hearing after hearing after hearing. Oh, they're in contempt of Congress oh, because they lied. Guess what? Every time that somebody has been dead to rights, guilty of something, you guys have just filled the airwaves with platitudes, garbage, sound bites, and never anything else. Nobody gets punished. Nobody ever has to pay for what they've done. And that's why the American people have zero trust in politicians and zero trust in the media. At this point, it becomes so much nonsense and noise. We all are to the point where we just don't give a shit anymore. We don't want to. And we've just been lied to so many times. We're fed up. I'm fed up. I think you can kind of tell.
it's time for a new direction, guys. And that's why there's someone who, once again, not necessarily endorsing, but it's somebody I happen to like uh, an awful lot and somebody who I believe in their level of integrity and I believe who is also equally as fed up. And I've seen the fire from this individual, honestly, truthfully, and I believe he can actually get something done. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's not Mike Lindell. I know you're thinking my pillow. It's not Mike Lindell that would be the challenger. And no, it's not Donald Trump. It is our wonderful Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs from Arizona. He's a hometown boy. We really like Andy. I've met him uh, on a couple of occasions. We've had uh, good conversations. I know people who know Andy really, really well for many years. He is sick to death with all of the bullshit and all the platitudes. He wants actual, physical, real change to happen. And, uh, and I believe in what Andy Biggs can get done. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, I want to say one little thing. It's sort of a funny analogy, and then I'm going to get out of here and let you guys get back to your lives, okay? But the reason why, uh, I'm going to compare this to religion. Are you ready to be offended? Because you're going to be. The Democrats stick together because they're typically very godless. And yes, there are some Democrats who go to church, and I get that. So, blah, pissed me off. You know. Anyway, just throw the hate in the comments if you really want to. But by and large, a lot of Democrats are atheists, and a lot of atheists are Democrats. It's it's one of those things that that sort of goes together, okay? They're typically godless, and they assume that their rights are derived from the state, because the state is their god, all right? And that's how that works. So they're unified in the fact that they don't believe in God, they don't believe in traditional marriage, they don't believe in the traditional family uh, structure, uh, you know, they typically want to be disruptors, however... Uh, you know, the the liberal mindset is different from your traditional liberals, obviously are far different uh, from the vapid leftists that we see today that occupy the Democrat Party. But they are unified, and they're always unified in lockstep against their common enemy. And they've declared Republicans, conservatives, Donald Trump voters, anybody who steers from their way of thinking, they are unified against that enemy. Case in point, Kristen Sinema has decided she's going to become an independent. You saw this. It was in the news recently, and I'll do another video on that later on. But you saw that she left the Democrat Party because she was sick and tired of the manipulation. She was tired of being pushed around. That's the truth. She's sick to death with it and pulled a respectful move and decided to pull away from both parties. She didn't become a Republican because she obviously doesn't believe in that boring, lame-ass, vanilla platform either. She's just sick of it and feels like she wants to do what? Oh, what? what? What What was that? Oh, represent the people of her state. She wants to put their needs first. She may have a different agenda, a different thought process, different virtues than I do, but I have a great deal of respect for someone who says, screw you, and I'm out of here, who's going to take their ball, and they're going to go home, and they're actually going to do the work for the people who are around them. And you want to realize, you want to see how the Democrats are even... <laughs> Oh, they're so united. Even Bernie, even Bernie, who is the independent guy, uh, turned on her and is saying awful things about her for leaving the Democrat Party, even though he's the the outlier himself. He still he still caucuses with, you know, with the Democrats. They're so united at that point. You want to you want to uh, criticize a Republican? (laughs) Oh, buddy. Guess what? You'll find 10 or 12 other Republicans who will agree with you. They'll agree with you. Because you know why? Because they're a lot like religion. The Demo- the Republican Party is a lot like religion as a nebulous whole, okay? It's a, hey, guess what? We all believe in God. We all believe in a creator. We all believe in the family. We all believe in traditions. We all believe in, you know, a traditional marriage. We're all going to believe uh, all of these things, and that should be enough to unite us on a united front. But guess what? Well, uh, do you believe in this? Well, yes, I do. But are you Lutheran? Well, I am. Well, we can't vote for him. Well, are you Catholic? Well, then we can't vote for him. Well, is he Mormon? Well, we can't vote for him. But wait, I thought we all agreed on some basic tenets of what was good, of good virtue and family and tradition. And, you know, we were conservatives. We're conserving the goodness and the wholeness in America. But we're not. Because there's so much infighting. There is so much 
territorial pissing going on, that it becomes disgusting. It becomes ridiculous, truly ridiculous. And I think, and I, I believe that there are many of you out there who feel the same way that I do. I'm tired of them nitpicking little things and because a guy believes something a little bit different, well, he's complete shit. We couldn't back him. We couldn't support that guy. And you know who's really one of the biggest purveyors of this nonsense and has been for a really, really long time? Oh, wait, you know him, you know him, and you love him. Oh, it's that guy. Well, he's good, but he's not good enough. Well, he's really good, but he's not good enough. That's my Mitch McConnell impression. You got to get your turkey waddle. Got to get your turkey waddle going. Well, uh, I've been in the Senate for 35,000 years, and it's never going to change that way. So that's kind of the bullshit that I am sick of. So Republicans, not you guys, your individual, free-thinking, wonderful, beautiful, awakening, amazing humans out there. The party, the RNC... The GOP as a whole is shit. They are losers on purpose, on your backs. I will follow in the wisdom of many others who I respect, uh, like David Webb, Andrew Wilkow, uh, others, even Sean Hannity and so on. Uh, I do respect these guys, and they have one common theme is they don't endorse a candidate uh, but also they encourage you not to donate to the RNC, donate to individual candidates in the races where you believe that in those individuals and the fact that they can bring real, uh, real conceivable change. So that's it guys. I want to tell you, uh, it's been a real pleasure and it always is. And I'm sorry if, uh, I'm not sorry. I'm not apologizing. So, um, <laughs> In, in the words of, of, of uh, Conor McGregor, I want to apologize to absolutely nobody. Um, but that's how it is. Guys, stay tuned. Stick with us. Lots more episodes, lots more content coming soon. Connect with us. Comments. Click subscribe like I asked. It's free. Do it. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you again in the future and new episodes coming in shortly. That's about it. I think I've said it a hundred times. Thank you. Jeremy Scott, over and out for now. Bye-bye.